Hello, here's my portrait of a beagle and his name is Max. It's a commissioned drawing that I did a while back and now I'm doing a narrated video for it. I'm going to be taking you through the drawing process and talking a little bit how you can achieve more depth and volume in a subject that has a very light, almost white coat and how you can simplify the portrait a little bit by omitting some details. My reference photo is going to be in the top left corner and I'm mostly going to be using a charcoal pencil. It's a Kohinoor Gioconda charcoal pencil but I also used some other tools which I'm going to be talking about. So if you like dogs and beagles in particular, keep watching. We're starting out with a sketch and the sketch was done with a 2H pencil and now I'm moving in with a sharp charcoal pencil. I need the charcoal pencil to be sharp because I'm going to be drawing fur. And a couple of things to remember as usual and I already talked about this in some other videos when drawing fur there are a couple of things to keep in mind. First is the length of the fur. Uh, the length of your strokes has to match the length of the fur that you are drawing. And the length of the fur varies depending on the part of the animal's body. And uh, the other thing is the direction of your strokes. So you have to try to make those strokes in the direction in which the hair grows or flows. It's a process that requires a little bit of patience and time but it's rewarding in the end because it'll look better if you stay consistent. Now the thing that I'm doing right now is I'm using a black colored pencil to shade a little bit of the background. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to make the background just a little bit darker to have a little bit of value to create contrast against the lighter parts of the beagle's body and in order to do that I need to make this background a little bit darker and now I'm blending it in and softening it with a soft brush so I'm just gonna fade it towards the edges and create a little bit of value so that these white parts or lighter parts of his body will stand out more. <clears throat> now I'm continuing with the ear that I started with and I'm drawing this fur. As usual, like I said, I'm making these strokes a little bit shorter. These are, these are tapered one, di one direction strokes and I'm making sure that uh, they are going in the direction of the fur. And the thing is that initially, especially when you're working with a charcoal pencil, uh, what you're getting may be a little bit grainy, it may appear to have a little bit more texture than you want, but later when you start blending it with a brush um, everything will become a lot um, softer and fluffier as you will see. So now I'm beginning to blend a little bit and you can see how the strokes that I made are not disappearing entirely. You can still see a little bit of them and you can see now why it's important to keep the strokes in the direction of, of the fur. Actually I'm not really sure how much of that my camera captures but I think you get the idea. And you can see uh, that now it's getting a lot softer appearance. 
you can also see that I'm going back in with a charcoal pencil because the ear obviously is, it has a, an uneven shape, so some parts of it are a little, bit, a little bit darker. So in order to show the topography of that ear, I have to go back in and add a little more value here and there. Doing the same thing, making those short tapered strokes. Also, you can move in with a pencil eraser here and there as well and create a few highlights, maybe create some of these lighter areas. <clears throat> so you can see me doing, doing that now. And now I'm starting to work on the eyes. Uh, I'm pressing a little bit harder here because the area around the eye is a little bit darker as well as the pupil. Now the, the eyes look uh, a little bit different from one another here in the reference photo and the reflection in the eye is also slightly different. You can sometimes simplify the reflections but here I mostly stuck to my reference photo and I think it turned out okay. So what you see me doing now is I'm using a tutillion to blend uh, to blend a little bit and of course I will leave the reflection or the highlight white. When drawing eyes you always have to remember that um, they are round objects so you need to shade them accordingly. And also you can use that tortillion when it has some charcoal on it you can use it to draw the fur around the eye because it's very short and soft so instead of using the pencil you can just uh, use the tortillion because it picked up a lot of charcoal and you can just use that to draw the fur around the eye which is what I'm doing now. Now I'm moving on to the nose. Again using a little bit more pressure because this area needs to be darker. These are some of the darkest areas on the dog. Uh, and later I'm going to be blending that as well but I'm going to try to retain some of the texture on the nose because it has a kind of a rough uh, texture, rough surface. Um, moving on to the other eye. Like I said, eyes they look slightly different from one another but I'm just gonna stick to my reference photo and shade them as best as I can. Now you can see that when if you look at the reference photo one of the challenges is the fact that uh, there are a lot of these white areas or very light areas on the dog and even the darker areas are not that dark. So that's one of the challenges when drawing a animal of a lighter color with a lighter fur or coat that it can end up looking a little bit too flat and uninteresting. So you need to push yourself to see the shape and value even in these lighter areas and you also need to find a way to make those lighter areas stand out from the background which is why I did a little bit of shading on the background. Moving on to the tongue. My camera isn't of great quality so uh, 
the quality of the video varies sometimes it's a little bit sharper sometimes it's a little bit blurrier but I do hope that you can see most of the detail the tongue itself is a little bit darker and also has its shape and volume and needs to be shaded so that uh, so that it, it looks like it has some volume and a little bit of thickness here and there and it also has a little bit of its texture so I'm gonna do that as well where I feel I want to blend more I can use a totillion and if I want to add a little more texture, I can go back in with a black colored pencil or the charcoal pencil, whichever. Now I'm drawing this lighter fur on top of his head. And because I want that part to be a little bit softer, I'm using just my tutillion for drawing. And now shading the area around the mouth and the nose. So this area between the eyes here uh, needs to be shaded a little bit because uh, the eyes are a little bit raised. using a brush to soften some of that hair moving on to the other ear using the same approach a sharp charcoal pencil and using a short tapered stroke again um, the ear has its irregularities and curves so one always has to keep that in mind as well and shade accordingly some parts of it will be darker than others and I think that in general the right side of the body is a little bit darker because the light source is coming more from the left Now I'm using a dirty brush with some charcoal on it to create some value in the background which is the same thing that I did on the left side but now I'm softening it so that it fades towards the edge and later I'm going to be cleaning that edge a little bit I mean the edge between the body and the background so that we have a little bit of contrast there if you like my videos make sure you subscribe and click the notification icon so that you can be notified uh, when I release a new video I want to use this opportunity to thank all of those who are watching my channel and commenting and giving me likes I appreciate your support. This is a relatively small channel, but I'm doing my best. Um, now I'm softening that texture that I created on the ear. And one, one of the things that you have to remember when working with a brush is that uh, when you're when you're blending with a brush now now you can see me that I've changed the angle I uh, approached the uh, the drawing from the left side the reason why I'm doing that is because when you're working with a brush uh, you can produce a clean edge if you're pointing the brush towards the edge if you're working with a brush 
the other way around, then it will be creating a soft edge. I felt that I needed a little more uh, darker value around the eyes and the nose. And these are some of the things, some of the adjustments that you have to do every now and then. One of the tips that I always give people um, and that I benefit from myself is that occasionally you, you just have to stop and look at your drawing from a distance and then look at your reference photo and you can see whether these larger shapes and larger values are in place and whether whether they're dark enough or big enough because sometimes when you're constantly close to the drawing you can get caught up in the detail and you forget about the much more important larger shapes so always try to step away from your drawing and see if it resembles your reference even when it's looked at from a distance another thing that also helps me if uh, when i look at uh, my drawings in a mirror you can notice certain problems that you don't see while you're working on it because like I said, you get too, too caught up in the details. Anyway, now I'm moving on to the collar. And because I can't see all of the details on it, I'm going to have to slim, simplify it a little bit. I mean, it's not really that much of an important detail anyway, so <clears throat> it's okay to simplify these details. But what I'm going to do is just uh, try to draw some of these darker areas and then smudge it a little bit with a tutelion and hope that it looks like a collar. Occasionally you can also even omit it completely. But I think this will be fine. You can see more of the drawing with, with a tutelion. You can often just use a tutelion for drawing instead of the pencil. Anyway, the drawing is almost finished now. You can see that the fur looks a lot softer than it initially did. And this was my signature. Now I'm just going to use this kneaded eraser to clean up a little bit. Like I said, you can see that the fur looks a little bit fluffier and softer than it initially did. This is a result of the blending uh, with a brush. One of the advantages of the brush is that it allows you to keep some of the texture. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.